Juan is the curse of someone who dies amid powerful rage. The curse happens in places where a person resided in their lives. When someone dies from Juan, they create new curses, continuing the cycle of eternal hatred. Inside an old home, a man with bloodied hands kills a cat. He killed his wife with a box cutter and kills himself. This story leads to several people's lives and how Juan affects them. Inside a social welfare center, Rika, a 23-year-old volunteer social worker, comes to the office and receives a new assignment by herself. Hirohashi, one of the local officers, put her in charge of the care of Sachi Tokunaga, a catatonic older woman. He drops the case on her, telling her that the previous officer went up and simply left. As Rika visits, she sees the home seemingly abandoned, creeped out by its weird atmosphere. She checks in, discovering that the entire house is in chaos. She looks around, hearing a loud squeaking noise. As she comes closer, a hand suddenly slams on the floor, showing Sachi out of her bed but unable to return to it. Rika tries to help her tidy up, striking up a conversation but to no avail. Rika starts to clean her up, and while vacuuming, she finds a family picture with the wife's face cut out. She continues to clean up, eventually hearing shuffling noises coming from the bedroom closet. The closet is taped shut, which she proceeds to undo. Checking the closet, a black cat immediately comes out with a young boy living inside. She recognizes the boy from the photo, prompting her to rush down and report the incident to the social welfare center. The phone rings after she hangs up with Hitomi, Sachi's daughter, calling to check on Kazumi, her sister-in-law. She's concerned about her mother's state and asks her to call back. Rika checks on the boy again as the call ends, only to see him creepily staring at her from above. She learns the boy's name to be Toshio, but a weird murmur comes from Sachi's room, drawing Rika's attention. Rika tries to calm her down, but Sachi's eyes widen with fear, seeing a dark figure come at her. A death rattle comes from the older woman, and the dark figure stares at Rika, making her faint. In another perspective, Kazumi is having difficulty dealing with the rattling, which she assumes to be Sachi's undoing. Ketsuya, her husband, wakes up, wondering about the chaos inside their home. Kazumi tells her husband that his mother is sleeping late, implying she's annoyed by it. She finds it hard to get along with her mother-in-law, but Katsuya brushes this off. She reminds him that his sister Hitomi is coming for dinner. Kazumi falls asleep on the couch after a day's worth of cleaning, only for a clink to startle her. While she assumes it was Sachi, more noise comes from outside, with some handprints showing up. A black cat shows up on the stairs, but small pale arms reach out and take the cat, scaring her as she checks. As she looks upstairs, a young child runs around. Kazumi screams. Later on, Katsuya comes home, only to find the home untidy once again. He finds his mother unsupervised, with much of the house in worse chaos, as if someone disturbed it. As he goes up, Katsuya finds Kazumi on the bed in shock, unable to move. She tries to utter a sound, but nothing comes out. As he calls for emergency services, a ghostly boy runs behind him. Toshio suddenly shows up, hissing like a cat. Katsuya asks who he is, but the room starts to rattle. Suddenly, Kazumi's eyes widen, jolting up before returning to her original position. Katsuya changes his expression as his face darkens, showing an evil gaze. Hitomi arrives in time for dinner, calling for Katsuya or Kazumi, only to get no response. Katsuya carries Kazumi's limp body upstairs, moving her to a different room. Hitomi hears the door slam, checking upstairs. She experiences a sudden headache, but brushes it off. She proceeds upstairs to see her brother, only for him to behave strangely. Katsuya kicks him out of the home, hearing the same weird ringing that Hitomi heard. He clicks his neck, going upstairs in rather loose movement. Inside the room where he brought Kazumi, the image of a woman with a pale, deathly appearance shows up on the window. We then follow Hitomi as she leaves her office for the night. She's the last to leave, leaving a message on Katsuya's phone number. As she tries to leave, she hears strange shuffling sounds in the corridor, alerting her to run towards the women's toilet. The shuffling continues while she finishes her business, as someone has come inside. A call comes from Katsuya, only to hear a death rattle from the other line. Hitomi annoyingly drops the call, prompting the next cuticle to bang the wall. As Hitomi goes out, a teddy bear ornament falls from her handbag. She tries to pick it up, only for the other cubicle to open. A ghastly black hair moves ominously toward her, emitting a death rattle similar to the call she heard. 
This spooks Hitomi, making her run to the security room. She asks their guard to give it a check, prompting a quick investigation. As security checks around, she looks onto the surveillance camera to observe. An ominous, misty shadow creeps onto the guard as the guard stops just outside the toilet. Hitomi flees the scene, screaming as she runs out. Hitomi gets into her apartment building and enters the elevator. Toshio, the ghastly boy, shows up on every floor without her knowledge on the elevator windows. Hitomi reaches her destination, closing her apartment as soon as possible. Tired, she tries to calm herself, only to see that she didn't recover her teddy bear trinket. Her home phone suddenly rings, prompting her to answer it. Katsuya is on the other line, asking for her apartment number as he's nearby. Hitomi immediately rings her door, seeing her brother through the peephole as he gives her the address. She opens the door in relief, only to see it empty. Hitomi hears the same death rattle from the phone, slamming the door shut while throwing the phone away. Hitomi tries to secure herself under a blanket, turning on the TV to check on the news and distract herself from the situation, only to see the image twisting and the sound becoming the death rattle once again. Hitomi gets creeped out even further, with the TV shutting down itself. She hides under her blankets, only to realize that she has her teddy bear trinket. However, this puts her in a deeper shock, throwing it to the ground. Somehow, a lump grows under her blanket, which looks like a human is standing at the end of her bed. Hitomi lifts the blanket, only to find a dreadful woman with jet black hair pulling her in. The lump goes away, and somehow, Hitomi disappears from her room. From another perspective, we see Rika's superior Hirohashi visit the Tokunaga household after Rika stops reporting to the social welfare center. He immediately runs to the door, ringing the doorbell. As he opens the property, he beckons if anyone's inside. Hirohashi sees Sachi dead with her hands holding her eyelids wide open. Suddenly, he finds the missing Rika in shock, sitting in a corner. Scared, he springs into action, calling for detectives to see through the investigation. As they look around the house, they go on to call Katsuya's mobile phone, hearing the ring from upstairs. They track the sound, looking out to find it in the attic. As they search, they discover both Katsuya and Kazumi dead. One of the detectives visits Rika, asking about her experiences in the Tokunaga household. She claims she saw Toshio in the house, but the investigators find nothing. The investigation unearths several facts, including every family that lived before the Tokunagas went dead or missing. Hitomi is missing too, with the guard at her workplace found dead. A newspaper clipping shows that a certain Seiki Takio killed his wife, Keiko. He was later found dead, and their child, Toshio, comes up. A man meets his child, Izumi, who plays in an empty lot in another place. Igarashi, one of the detectives, comes forward, asking the man if he is Toyama Yuji, requesting his advice regarding their current investigation. Toyama previously took on a case on a man named Takio, who murdered his wife, Keiko. While Toyama does not want to be involved anymore, the detectives turn for his help as he's the last one left who worked on the case. At the police station, Rika answers more questions, confirming that it is indeed Toshio he saw, who was missing five years ago. Later on, a man goes into a washroom to find a dead Hirohashi, with his eyes wide open in shock. Toyama and Rika meet for a moment, with the detectives consulting with the former. They've used security tape from Hitomi's office building, only for Toyama to see the misty shadow take the guard. As he continues watching, the shadow transforms into a woman who emerges from the toilet. Suddenly, a face shows up on the camera, making him stare straight into the image. Toyama is unable to bear the fear, looking away from the TV. Later on, Rika lies in bed at home, only to see Toshio standing beside her, hearing an ominous death rattle. She sees the ghost of Keiko bending over, staring at her while Toshio sits on top of her blanket. Meanwhile, Toyama goes into the Tokunaga household, convinced that the house is the source of all the mysterious incidents. He goes inside with two canisters of gasoline, ready to burn them to the ground. However, Toyama sees a vision of Izumi as a teenager. As she leaves the house, she sees her father open the door. Meanwhile, the detectives look for Toyama, unable to find him anywhere. Toyama goes upstairs and sees Izumi's friends before an unknown thing attacks them. As the vision goes away, he sees Keiko crawling, making him stumble down the stairs. The investigators find him frightened out of his wits, asking what's happening. Toyama runs away, scrambling out of the door. Keiko slowly crawls down the stairs on all fours, moving towards the two investigators. Several years later, Izumi is now a teenager, 
walking to school with her friends. She notices a missing person's poster featuring three of her friends. They pick photos taken by the school at school, only to find out Izumi was not in any of them. The students check for Izumi's photos with their teacher while she goes home, seeing the poster once again. She runs away, feeling guilty, somehow knowing what happened. We also discover that Toyama is long dead, likely a victim of the grudge. Izumi goes to her room, but she feels she's being watched. Her paranoia is not without reason. A week later, her classmates visit Izumi at home, only for her mother to answer the door, disheveled and clearly disturbed. They check on Izumi going into her room, only to see their friend clearly deteriorating and afraid. Izumi freaks out about the entire situation, haunted by her feelings of guilt after her other friends go missing. They discover that the posse will visit the haunted house, only for Izumi to back out at the last minute. As the girls leave, Izumi's mother apologizes, noting that her husband also showed the same symptoms before death. The girls then remember the photos they brought to show Izumi, only to see why the teacher did not post any pictures of Izumi. Izumi's eyes are blacked out in every image, together with those of her three missing friends. Back to Izumi, she dreams of her dead father, telling him she saw him at the haunted house. She then realizes that there are newspaper scraps on her bed and tries to put them back on the windows. When she does, she sees her three missing friends, their faces ghastly white, staring at her. Izumi flees in sheer terror as they pursue her, only to end up in the room where her father was during the dream. She tries to block them off, but to no avail. As she panics, Izumi backs up on her father's funeral altar, but Keiko's ghastly hands pull her. She drags Izumi, who is kicking and screaming. We only see a brand new altar with two mortuary tablets and the ghastly faces of those who own them, one for Toyama and one for Izumi. Rika has recovered from the trauma of the events that transpired. She goes out to meet with Mariko for lunch. Behind her, an older man plays peekaboo with an unseen person who is somehow beside Rika. Another worker, assuming the older man is being forgetful, joins in, only for him to get snubbed. The older man continues playing, making Rika feel uneasy about the entire process. As Rika moves the older man around, a reflection on the door reveals Toshio is the unseen playmate. Later Rika tries to take a bath, only to feel a hand touch her hair. She immediately looks around but finds nothing at all. She goes out to have lunch with Mariko, only to feel a touch under the table. Rika checks underneath, only to see Toshio once again. Rika screams in terror, haunted by the kid years after the event. At home, she tries to rest, terrified of the situation. She dreams of a group of black cats haunting her while Toshio sits in the corner of her eye. She receives a call from Mariko, telling her that she's about to visit a student who hasn't come to school for a while. Rika overhears a cat on the phone, with the line dying on the spot. She concludes that Mariko is at the haunted house, pushing her to run and help. However, she is too late, seeing Mariko's body dragged into the attic. Rika follows Mariko, checking the attic through an opening at the top of the closet that she originally saw from before. As she looks, she sees Keiko crawling toward her, making her flee downstairs to the door. She glimpses a quick but unfamiliar reflection in the mirror on the way. As she looks at her own reflection, she tries to do a peekaboo motion, remembering all the situations where people saw the ghosts, only to reveal Keiko staring back at her through her fingers. As this happens, she feels Keiko emerge from her chest, realizing this is a daydream. Rika hears movement from upstairs, only to see the ghost of Keiko inside a blood-soaked plastic bag, slowly creeping to her, reaching out for help. Rika covers her face with her hands again, only to see herself as Keiko. She sees everything Keiko saw, together with all her previous victims. Keiko disappears after this revelation, only for her to see Keiko's husband Takio as a yurei or ghost. Rika realizes that he is the source of the curse, moving toward her. Looking upstairs, she sees Toshio upstairs, similar to how he saw his father kill his mother. As Rika remains stunned in fear, Takio reaches for her with his bloody hand. She screams in panic as the screen goes black. Later on, the streets and the world, in general, are empty with many missing people. We see Rika dead inside a sack, only for her to awaken with bloody tears falling.